Good morning, hello to all dear students. Uh, today we present really exciting topic around the central nervous system. Uh, this is the whole complex uh, situated between the, the dalencephalon and the brainstem. We call it diencephalon, and diencephalon consists of uh, many parts. Before that, we have to say that the anterior portion of the whole brain called prosencephalon, prosencephalon, using this Greek word encephalon, is divided into the telencephalon uh, and then diencephalon. Diencephalon has the following parts. Uh, when you look and we, when we start uh, from this cross section of the diencephalic parts in the development and the formation uh, of the neural tube, so we remember this diagram uh, from the explanation of the development of the location of nuclei in the base of the fourth ventricle, rhomboid fossa. So you probably remember that we defined a lot of plate which is sensory and motor plate, which is uh, uh, which is basal plate, motor plate in red color. And the same is with the development of the diencephalon. Uh, the first part is called epithalamus. We will speak about the epithalamus as the as very small part of the uh, diencephalon. When we look at the weight is approximately one gram, you see, it's a very small part. Much larger is number two is the uh, is the thalamus. Thalamus has around 18 to 20 grams. Uh, thalamus uh, is the uh, important relay station of the brain. Then following part is metathalamus. Metathalamus is a part which is connected with the visual and, uh, and auditory pathway. And then approaching to the lower portion in red colors, number uh, four is the subthalamus also it's a relatively small part you see around uh, two grams mm, uh, important for the motor cooperation and finally the hypothalamus a larger part having around five grams uh, smaller than the uh, thalamus definitely situated below the thalamus but important as the endocrine control uh, uh, center no and then uh, we also can name number six of encephalon, which is a part of the visual track, visual pathway. So this is the introduction of the parts of diencephalon. So and we will start uh, step by step with short description of all. Again, lecture is the introduction, but I'm sure that if you remember these main parts, uh, you will <coughs> study much easier. So we are looking at the dorsal view here. Uh, first of all, we see the space of the third ventricle. Third ventricle is as the sagittally oriented cleft between the thalamus, between the right thalamus and the left on the opposite side. And then uh, the thalamus, uh, thalamus uh, uh, is uh, attached uh, to the other side, side by the interthalamic mass, which is not drawn here. But uh, this interthalamic mass is not the functional connection, it's just gray matter. Uh, on the lateral side, we see also the vein collecting the blood from the superior surface and also from the basal ganglion because as I'm drawing the row of the dots, we are at the level of the striatum. That's why the vein is called thalamus striate and striatum is the term used for the basal ganglia. Uh, we will speak about the basal ganglia together with telencephalon, just to know that thalamus lies between the uh, between the basal ganglion, uh, the lateral side, and the third ventricle on the medial side. Uh, when we look at the dorsal side using yellowish color, uh, we define the epithalamus, epithalamic structure. Uh, then, first of all, uh, uh, is the pineal not not quite clear handwriting must be improved <laughs> pineal body epiphysis which as written here manufactures melatonin that mediates some uh, important functions we call them cy cyclic functions such as sleep cycle sleep cycle or sleep wake cycle and also controls uh, the reproductive cycles and uh, puberty. Uh, so this is uh, epiphysis, but uh, important would be also the 
trabecular, uh, so trabecular part, we call it abenular trigon, abenular nuclei, and their commission. So we will see that uh, here at the level, of, uh, there is the interconnection between right and left half. So we will remember the habenular trigon or trabecular system, uh, tra uh, sorry, habenular uh, nuclei, which are important for the functions as we will see on the next page. But before that, before we leave this page, we have to mention also a method thalamus uh, colored by blue, which consists of the geniculate bodies. A is the lateral representing subcortical center of the visual tract. And B is the medial geniculate body representing auditory uh, pathway or better subcortical center of the auditory pathway. And these, uh, these uh, geniculate bodies, small bodies situated on the lateral side, as you see on the lateral side of the thalamus attached, being attached to the thalamus, they are interconnected by these two brachia, uh, small letters A and B, and this brachia uh, represent the interconnecting uh, uh, neurons uh, with the superior colliculi involved in the vi visual pathway and inferior colliculi, uh, the pathway of hearing. So this is all to the methathalamus. So this is just uh, this short information. And then we are looking at the next page, again, completing the, meth uh, the epithalamic structures. So just summary, epithalamus. <coughs> That means the habenular trigon, habenular nuclei, and their interconnection. The interconnection is called commissure. Mediates olfactory stimuli and feeding behavior, and also the other activities. This is the most important at the moment. Metathalamus, as we defined, contains the subcortical centers of visual and auditory pathway, also uh, defined before. No? And then uh, we leave the thalamus as the biggest one uh, for the next, as the next step, because uh, better would be to say some words to the small part um, involved in the motor. That's why we used uh, red color uh, for the uh, subthalamus. Uh, subthalamus is situated, as name says, below the thalamus. So looking at the, uh, now on the coronal section, this is the coronal section. Just for better orientation, here is the uh, colossal body. This is the colossal body, corpus callosum, uh, interconnected right and left half, the biggest commissure, just at the moment, sufficient. Then you see that there is a small band of white fibers called fornix. Also, we remember that on all the sections, on all, all the coronal section, we will see fornix belonging to the olfactory tract, as you see. Then we are in the uh, in the lateral ventricle, lateral ventricle lies above the thalamus and contains this choroid plexus. Uh, we remember that choroid plexus in all the ventricles produce or choroid plexuses produce the, uh, the, uh, the fluid. And then uh, that this light blue dots indicates uh, the, uh, the, uh, the choroid plexus and uh, the, uh, the cavity of the lateral ventricle. The same is here. Here we see the choroid plexus of the, uh, of the third ventricle. Now we are in the third ventricle. This is also a third ventricle. And um, also here we see the interthalamic mass or adhesio interthalamica. Uh, another word, uh, just mentioning that this is the interconnection uh, important for stability of the thalamus. It could in around 25-30 percent be absent. Fine. So we see the uh, coronal section of the thalamus. Again, light blue dots indicate cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, when we look at the um, at the uh, uh, reddish structures. Uh, first of all, the most important is the subthalamic nucleus or nucleus of Luisi. Uh, subthalamic nucleus represents the motor activity. And uh, together with the other structures like the uh, fields, fields of forel H1, H2, we see them here situated on the inferomedial side of the thalamus. Uh, they provide the, uh, the interconnections with the basal ganglia. Uh, we used red basal motor ganglia 
of the telencephalon. This is what we said. And uh, also, uh, here is the reticular nucleus belonging to the reticular, reticular uh, complex and also zona inserta. Uh, we said that the reticular formation extends from the C5, it was, it was, uh, it was seen on the diagram, up to the diencephalon, yes. So now we know that the zona inserta is the terminal portion of the reticular formation complex. So subthalamus again, is involved in the motor regulation representing typical subcortical centers. So just for terminology, we know that there is a cortex of the brain uh, representing cortical motor centers and many other structures like the basal ganglia or subthalamic nucleus of Lucy in the subthalamus uh, representing the subcortical motor centers. But we will speak about that again again and again. So now approaching to the thalamus, starting with the thalamus as the main part uh, or biggest part of the, um, of, uh, the diencephalon. Uh, thalamus, uh, as uh, you can read with me, consists of large number of nuclei. We will not study all the nuclei, just some of them. One diagram must be drawn, but uh, without any, any specific details. <clears throat> then it's written that it modulates almost all the neural activities and connections with the cortex. We call it also relay. So this is called relay, principal relay, important relay, an integrative station for information passing from, uh, from, uh, from the different areas of the body via the thalamus to the cortex. Uh, then, uh, it receives uh, all the sensory inputs, practically all the inputs, uh, with exception of direct, uh, uh, a direct uh, olfactory pathway. All the other pathways must pass through the thalamus as the, through relay. Uh, then uh, the nuclei, uh, as you see, are of great uh, uh, importance as the afferent tracts. Uh, we said optic tract uh, from the lemniscal system. Yes, we remember that lemnisci are two, media lateral. Lateral is the, uh, is the pathway of hearing, but media lemniscus uh, represents the complex of all the ascending tracts from the receptors. Then uh, the somatomotor tracts from the basal ganglia as the feedback. Yes, the nuclei uh, also uh, are involved in the feedback with the basal ganglia with the motor system. And so it means that uh, the thalamus is not only sensory center, also it's important as the feedback station uh, for the somatomotor tracts. Then uh, we see the, uh, the rhinencephalic and limbic ascending uh, tracts that pass also uh, to the uh, ganglia. So also the nuclei uh, of the thalamus receive uh, the renencephalic and limbic system tracts. And finally also uh, the uh, reticular formation uh, which influences the cerebral context via the thalamus and vice versa. So there are also both ways of the interconnections. And finally, we have to know that uh, the nuclei play an important role in con conscious appreciation of sensation, that means pain, that means extreme cold, heat, touch, etc. So uh, all these pathways pass through the nuclei of the thalamus. No, and concerning the uh, main uh, main divisions of the activities of thalamus, we divide the thalamus into the specific and into the non-specific uh, thalamic nuclei. Uh, the difference between these two groups is quite clear. Specific thalamus receives the inputs and sends them to specific areas of the brain cortex. We call it, we call it projection areas. And they are either sensory or motor. But non-specific, the second one, non-specific thalamus, uh, uh, sends uh, the following neurons, not to the projection areas, but it sends them to the association areas. So we are looking now at the following simplified drawing. Uh, excellent. And then this explains uh, 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 clearly uh, the whole situation. So we see the inputs. Yes, they are, they are uh, the afferent pathways. 
these are sensory tracts, general sensation, special sensory tracts, etc., uh, reaching the thalamic nuclei after synapsing. Uh, the following neurons run to the specific, or we call it uh, projection cortical areas. Good example is visual cortex situated here in the occipital lobe, or to the sensory areas for general sensation, postcentral gyrus, or to the motor areas, yes, to the motor cortex area four, six, eight, and also to the uh, olfactory area, etc. But these are colored by different colors, red and blue. But using uh, yellow, we mentioned in the previous text that uh, the non specific thalamus sends the impulses, better the, the following neurons, to the uh, association areas. Association areas are important for cooperation at the level of the whole cortex. So they are larger than the projection areas and play a key role in the cooperation between the projection areas. So that's the explanation of two different terms, specific, non-specific. Yes, and now we are looking at the thalamus from above. This is the superior view. Uh, very simply, uh, just for, we see here putting uh, a line of the dots. Again, we said this is that striatum here. Uh, this part is the caudate nucleus belonging to the basal ganglia, a part of the telencephalon. Again, repeating here, you see that thalamus striate vein. We said that thalamus striate vein collects the blood from the superior part of the thalamus and that the striatum or basal ganglion or the caudate nucleus. Uh, on the surface is attached the choroid plexus. We said that this is called the choroid tenia, attachment of choroid plexus producing cerebrospinal fluid, the, uh, the, the lateral side. Then uh, here you see that the thalamus, the surface of the thalamus, uh, with the anterior tubercle. Yes, posterior part is not called tubercle, it's called pulvinar thalami, pulvinar thalamus. And uh, also uh, we see the interthalamic mass, adhesio interthalamica, gray matter without tracts or no tracts. And again, we see the cavity of the third ventricle. Uh, yellowish is the uh, epiphysis habineural trigon, habineural uh, commissure, etc. Uh, the name lamina affixa is the lamina, thin lamina of white matter belonging to the tele, mainly telencephalic structures. And then finally, we see also tectum of uh, mesencephalon with superior inferior colliculi just for better orientation in the drawing. Uh, concerning the th thalamic nuclei, next point, thalamic nuclei. Thalamic nuclei uh, should be explained in one diagram, relatively complicated. Uh, first of start, uh, we have to, first of all, we have to start with the uh, general view. We are looking at the, this is the posterior, posterior surface. Here's the anterior part, anterior surface, and here's the lateral. So that's why we see posterior lateral view. And in this, uh, in this uh, scheme, we see the left thalamus, and the right thalamus on this side, and between them is it is interthalamic mass, adhesio interthalamica, and for better description of the uh, nuclei, we have to draw also the section. So section one red line. No, and also on the lateral side we see two genuclide bodies belonging to the metathalamus. Remember that metathalamus is connected with super inferior colliculi, subcortical centers of the visual and and uh, and uh, of, uh, or uh, auditory pathway. Yes, so we are looking now at the diagram showing that uh, that uh, uh, nuclei. So you see, this is relatively complicated, but we will not study all of them. We have to be oriented in this drawing. Again, this is the anterior portion, then the section, the line, the red line showing the section, and then uh, we are looking at the posterior portion of the thalamus. We are drawing the dorsal view uh, of, the, of the right thalamus. First of all, uh, there are some white areas, white zones, we call them lamini. So this is the lamina, lamini, and in the lamina, lamini are situated the intralaminar, intralaminar nuclei. Anteriorly, 
uh, is the anterior, uh, anterior nucleus of uh, thalamus. We will remember that anterior nucleus belongs to the limbic system. So again, when we draw some diagrams and sections, etc., cetera, so, uh, superficial views, uh, we always uh, put some basic information concerning uh, the, uh, the, the part, uh, to which part of the system belongs this and that, that uh, point or this area of each structure, including the thalamus. So now we remember that anterior nucleus, yes, is the limbic system. Then, uh, then we see the medial nuclei. You see this is a large complex uh, using uh, darker and uh, lighter blue. So medial nuclei larger. And then you see here the dorsal medial nuclei, dorsal median. Uh, consider terminology uh, is not easy to specify all the position of the nuclei. That's why the names are relatively complicated. Lateral dorsal, for instance, so anterolateral, etc. But uh, uh, there is no any other way to describe that. So we know media nuclei, dorsal media nuclei, uh, interlaminar nuclei, and then anterior nucleus. Concerning the dorsal portion, we called it pulvinar thalami, pulvinar of thalamus, and uh, pulvinar to, to pulvinar uh, ta nuclei are attached to geniculate bodies. Uh, that means uh, uh, the, uh, the lateral and medial, we said. No, and then uh, uh, finally, uh, we are at the level of relatively or not large part, but extremely important for uh, the ascending uh, or perception of ascending pathways. Uh, first of all, is the lateral dorsal nucleus. Maybe just three, four nuclei will be mentioned in the final review of the pathways. Then laterally, we see the anterolateral nucleus nuclei. Then ventral posterior posterior lateral nucleus nuclei. Again, ventral posterior lateral. Then this. A uh, small conical area belongs to the ventral posterior medial. This is this corresponds with the words, uh, uh, with my words that it means a ventral posterior lateral yellow with ventral posterior medial, and also in uh, red color posterior lateral nuclei. So the classification of the nuclei uh, is based on the location because their names are not related to the function. The functions will be explained on the next, next page. So we are now approaching to the classification of nuclei. Next page. Uh, yes, this is the classification of nuclei of thalamus. Uh, we see uh, some groups. Number one is, the, uh, is this group of specific nuclei. As you see, not so many. And uh, in this very simplified uh, schemes, we see always the bluish is the pathway showing uh, the direction uh, of the following neurons from the nuclei to the different parts of the cortex. For instance, you see here is the projection area or other projection areas of the cortex of the brain. When we say cortex here, so we, we mentioned always the cortex of the telencephalon. And also in the dotted lines, uh, we draw the feedback. So a good example is here. We see the ventral nuclei, all the ventral nuclei and all the geniculate nuclei, they are connected with the uh, projection areas of the cortex. So this is easy to remember with full feedback. Uh, the second group are the non-specific. So non-specific means that they are uh, connected with different parts of the cortex and also basal ganglia. Uh, so uh, to the spe non-specific nuclei belong to the medial nuclei uh, and intralaminar, we remember situated the lamini, they receive the information from the spinal thalamic tracts. We remember that spinal thalamic tract tracts belong to the nociceptive or protopathic tracts. Uh, we said that they transmit the, uh, the warning signals from the different receptors in our body, transmitting pain, uh, extreme uh, heat, uh, cold, touch, etc. And they run to the different or they transmit information to cortex, to the basal ganglia, a striatum or reticular formation. Then, uh, next group are the, uh, are the nuclei which are involved in the association 
activities. We said that in the yellowish color are were colored the larger areas of association, association areas of the cortex. So involved are the pulvinar nucleus, dorsal median, anterior nucleus. We said anterior nucleus belongs to the limbic, so this is just to know. Uh, the uh, information comes from a different different sources from the cortex, which is situated uh, in the frontal part, we call it at the moment the sufficient, we, we call it prefrontal cortex, anterior thalam, uh, thalamic nuclei belonging to, thalamic, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the um, uh, specific thalamic groups involved in the limbic system. So uh, they are uh, mammillothalamic tracts from hypothalamus. So uh, also another information. And then uh, the nuclei receive different, different information and they distribute them to the and then look to the other thalamic nuclei. This is very common situation that many nuclei receive the information from different uh, ascending tracts and redistribute this information to the other thalamic nuclei or to the director to the cortex. This is the same here to the uh, thalamic nuclei to the cort or to the cortex. Uh, then uh, anterior nucleus, which is part of the limbic system, is connected again with the hypothalamus with some specific gyri belonging to the limbic system. This corresponds, fully corresponds with our information that anterior nucleus of thalamus belongs to the uh, uh, activities of the limbic system. No, uh, the next group is group number three, uh, which means the nuclei involved in the motor activities. Yes, also thalamus is involved in the motor activities. Uh, first of all, lateral and ventral nuclei belonging to the anterolateral. So that's, we used just a general name, anterolateral this is sufficient for us. They received the information from the reticular formation from the basal ganglia of the, uh, of the cortex. And they, uh, they redistribute this information to the, uh, as a feedback to reticular formation, to basal ganglia, striatum, and to the premotor cortex. No, again, involved in the, in the feedback and coordination of the motor activities. Uh, so these are four, uh, four groups of the nuclei. No, and then finally we go to the, uh, we start with the hypothalamus, hypothalamus as a, uh, uh, again, a relatively complicated uh, part of the uh, diencephalon. So uh, the hypothalamus contains essential nuclei for life. So I mean that this is uh, a sufficient uh, definition because they control, uh, control endocrine glands, glands and their activities, visceral functions, uh, homeostasis inside the body, controlling temperature, and also balance of the liquids, fluid balance. So that's why we really underline uh, the definition that these are essential for our life. Uh, looking at the sagittal section, uh, for better uh, orientation, we uh, are looking at the colossal body. Uh, we have seen colossal body as the biggest commissure, commissural pathway, uh, interconnecting right and left, uh, right and left half of the of the uh, brain, the hemispheres. Uh, below that, colossal body forms an arch, the fornix. We said that when we draw many coronal sections, we will see always the fornix at different positions. Uh, then we are at the level of the choroid plexus of the plexus of the third ventricle attachment uh, to the roof of the uh, of the third ventricle producing, as we said, cerebrospinal fluid. Then we see the thalamus adhesio intertalamica, intertalamic mass. Then hypothalamic sulcus, the groove separating the thalamus from the hypothalamus, which is that part. Uh, by the way, this hypothalamus is smaller than, than the, the thalamus, but for the uh, pedagogical reasons, uh, we are drawing the hypothalamus larger. 
uh, that we see the epithalamus, you remember, epith epiphysis, the habenula, habenula trigon, habenula interconnections. And note, please, that here is also the posterior commissure. Uh, the, there are more commissures interconnected right and left half of the brain, including the cortex and the brain stem. So one of the commissures is the posterior commissure, and here is also the anterior commissure. Just to know the position of the commissures, and here's the habenular commissure. So there are three plus uh, colossal body, four commissures at the same moment. No, uh, in drawing. And then uh, when we look at the thalamus behind, that is the opening. We call it interventricular foramen, which is the foramen, uh, the opening uh, providing common direct communication uh, between the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle. So we are in the third ventricle, in the sagittally oriented cleft between thalami. And finally, we are approaching to the hypothalamus. Uh, hypothalamus consists of some groups of the nuclei. So uh, we describe anterior, there are more nuclei, definitely more nuclei, but uh, there is no reason to describe all of them. First of all, uh, this is the anterior group, anterior, uh, anterior nuclei of the thalamus. Then there is the central middle group or also tuberal. We will, we will see why. And finally, the posterior or uh, the nuclei belonging mainly to the mammillary body. No, uh, concerning the nuclei, uh, note please that here we see the uh, nerve number two optic nerve. Uh, so the anterior group lies above the optic nerve. Here we see the tuber tuber to which is attached in fundibulum of the hypophysis, uh, hypophysis, and here's the infundibulum. And finally, dorsally are two paired mammillary bodies. So uh, they are <coughs> situated dorsally. So again, we see the three groups, anterior, middle, and posterior with the numerals. So we are looking at the names. Uh, some of them are very important. So uh, concerning the uh, anterior, number one is pre-optic, uh, then, the, uh, then following anterior, suprachiasmatic. So first of all, we could say that um, the uh, pre-optic nucle nucleus is uh, connected with the parasympathetic excitation and also uh, involved in the temp temperature uh, control, temperature control, then uh, then, yes, then uh, the same is anterior, then uh, suprachiasmatic above the uh, chiasma opticum, uh, belonging to visual tract reticular retinal impulses, supraoptic and paraventricular are very important nuclei because they release the uh, antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. We don't know that antidiuretic hormone acts, uh, acts against the I guess the production, production of urine and oxytocin uh, influences the contraction of smooth musculature of the vamp of the uterus. So this is the first group, anterior middle group consists of in principle of three nuclei, dorsomedial, ventromedial, infundibular. Uh, these two uh, control the behavior and also control of appetite. Uh, the arcuate, because it forms the nice arch, that's why it's called infundibular arcuate, releases li liberins among the others, uh, they control activity of the cells of the adenohypophysis. So we will see final, a final drawing uh, of hypophysis and we will repeat these names again. No? And uh, finally, the posterior uh, group consists of two main nuclei, posterior nucleus and then mammillary nuclei, which are more uh, connected with sympathetic excitation and also involved in the, in the sleep weight cycle mediation. And then the mammillary belongs to the limbic system and short term memory. We usually speak about the short term memory, which is typical for, uh, for, <laughs> for many students because they study something on, on, uh, uh, on Sunday at the end of the week and then Monday, uh, the information probably uh, is lost. No, short-term memory. No, and finally, uh, we are looking at hypo hypophysis. So finalizing the complex of the hypophysis and hypothalamus. So we have to say some important words. Number one is that hypophysis is small, very small 
structure, gland, hypophysis, you see the weight is 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 grams, and size is anterior, posterior 10, 10 millimeters and lateral, laterally 5 millimeters, so very small one, is attached to infundibulum. So through infundibulum pass, very important tracts, you will see them, that one, or in green, this one. Uh, then, um, then, uh, we, uh, we all, all of us know that there is the uh, intermedial uh, central portion and then anterior larger part is called adenohypophysis and posterior part is called neurohypophysis. They differ in the origin, in development and the function. First of all, the nuclei, we remember paraventricular supraoptic, they secret, they produce, produce the hormones which are transported to the uh, neurohypophysis, which is the part which doesn't produce any hormones. And from this storage, the hormones are released to the venous blood. So we will remember that the hormones are always secreted or produced, released into the venous blood. So uh, mainly into the cavernous sinus, as written here, the uh, efferent veins and uh, cavernous sinus. Uh, good. Uh, the tracts are called supraoptico hypophysial and the transport of the, uh, of the granules, we could say, of the hormones are, is called neurocrinia, neurocrinia. Uh, completely different situation is with the adenohypophysis because adenohypophysis contains the, the cells that produce, they secret trophic hormones. They secret trophic hormones directly to the venous bloodstream, somatotropic, uh, uh, tereotropic, adrenocorticotropic hormone, luteotropic, etc. So these hormones are produced uh, by these cells, but the cells are under control of the, of, uh, the group we remember the central group. Uh, uh, we remember the, uh, we remember uh, the the names of the nuclei: the dorsomedial, ventromedial, and infundibular nuclei six, seven, eight. And they uh, they uh, send the uh, tubero infundibular tracts tubero infundibular uh, to the area which is called portal area or portal system of the veins that are connected with the venous system or the, with, the, with the system of the vessels surrounding uh, the cells of the adenohypophysis secreting the trophic hormones. So there are two different systems. One is the supraoptico hypophysial posterior, and the second one is called tubero infundibular tract, principally different. Uh, note please that uh, the uh, uh, posterior uh, lobe receives two hormones. We said the oxytocin, yes, and antidiuretic hormone, vasopressin. Uh, these nuclei uh, send the liberins, which influence the activity of the cells. Uh, also, what is important is the blood supply, superior hypophysial artery, and the inferior hypophysial artery that uh, that uh, are direct branches of the internal carotid artery. Uh, the hypophysis lies in the cella torsica, Turkish saddle. Uh, here we see the uh, hypophysis, uh, cella, the saddle, and uh, the superior opening is closed, covered by the duplication of dura mater. So dura mater covers also the Turkish cellar torsica. So this is all to the Dan Cephalon. Thank you for attention and looking forward to, uh, uh, to uh, be in contact also in the following chapter, which will be uh, the Talent Cephalon. Thank you.